Good morning. Welcome to the Mass this morning, this being our 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are glad you are here and joining us in this celebration. Our entrance song is Lift Up Your Hearts, number 566 in the Breaking Bread, number 566. Please stand. Welcome to Sacred Heart Church. I'm Father Carlos Alvarez. It's the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, we're happy to have you. Uh, special welcome if you're back on campus at the Adams State University or Trinidad State Junior College. Uh, it's great to have you with us uh, as you come back and start your second week of school beginning tomorrow. Today we're offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for the soul of Joe E. as in Edward. I don't know that that's his middle name, but Joe E. Montoya. We're also praying for Jim Geyser on the ninth day of the Novena, praying for his soul. And of course, we pray for all the intentions we hold in our hearts, united with the sacred heart of Jesus, placed on the sacred altar, just as surely as bread and wine are transubstantiated into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. We know that God hears and answers our prayers according to his will. And again, all visitors, a special welcome to you. If I didn't get to meet you before Mass, I look forward to meeting you and greeting you individually at the end of Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers, my sisters, to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, we come before God with humble and contrite hearts. We do acknowledge our sins. We trust in God's infinite mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
God who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve the gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the peoples answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evil doers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the broken hearted and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Many are the troubles of the just but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Taste and see the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be, sub be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate their, hus their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife just the Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should subordinate to their husbands on everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and hand them himself over to, for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle of any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves, loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherish it even as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence in reference to Christ 
and the church. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And for this, and he said this. For this reason I have told you that no one can come to the Father, can come to me, unless it is granted by the Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My grandmother, Sofia, um, was living with my Tio Placido, my Tia Rosa, in Avondale. And then after her sister, my, my great aunt, uh, Susana, died, uh, about a year later, she moved in with my father and my mother into our family home in Pueblo. My grandmother, since she was a, a girl, had a deep devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She told me that when she was a girl, uh, that a Padre Diego came and gave a week-long retreat on the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And her devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus was set from the time she was a girl. She had a statue of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but she left it in Avondale because our home didn't have room for her, for her own bedroom at the time she moved in, in 1971. So I think shortly after she arrived, um, my father purchased an uh, image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and I remember it being blessed and I remember it being placed on the wall near the dining room table and it's there to this very day uh, all these years later, 53 years later um, and it came to mind as I was reflecting on today's scriptures uh, that event of our devotion to the Sacred Heart being uh, 
manifest, if you will, with, with the image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So uh, it reminded me of what uh, Joshua did in today's gospel, how he, how he, speaking in the name of all of Israel, now in the Holy Land, after 40 years had passed and they had crossed the Jordan into the Holy Land, how he affirmed in a very public way at Shechem, just north of Jerusalem, not far from Jerusalem, his covenant service to God. You know, God, Yahweh, if you will, Adonai, better said, yeah, Adonai was the head of Israel, and he affirmed that he and his family would serve Adonai, that they would not serve the gods of their ancient ancestors beyond the river, which is the Euphrates, or the gods of the Canaanites where they were dwelling, the land that they had just inherited. Um, and, and so that's an important thing for us to remember because, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that we give our time and attention to, and if those things overshadow our, our love and, and devotion and service of God, then those things are idols. And it's, it's, it's a sin against the first commandment. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. So Joshua did it in a very public way in our first reading. Now, uh, in the gospel, when Jesus affirms that he is the bread of life, whoever eats me will live forever, when he affirms that, many of his disciples leave. And Jesus doesn't walk back what he's saying and what he's teaching. He doesn't say, no, no, I didn't mean it. It's just a symbol. No, he let them leave. They made the choice not to renew their covenant with uh, Jesus as disciples of Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, and Jesus didn't beg them to turn around or he didn't soft pedal what he was teaching. He let them leave. Why? Because we have free will. We can choose to follow Jesus or we can reject Jesus and follow the ways of the world. Yet Peter, speaking on behalf of the twelve and the other disciples who remained, many left but a few stayed as well as the twelve apostles. He said, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Okay. So Jesus recognized that already, uh, Peter recognized that already the words and the signs that Jesus were performing showed that he was the Messiah, that he was a fulfillment of these prophecies that they had been hearing for nearly 700 years. They had given up their lives, and at this point, after this difficult teaching, um, he affirmed that he was not going to leave, that he was going to stay. And so the challenge for us then is to do the same thing daily, daily really, because there's so many things that vie for our hearts and our minds, our attention. And, you know, it can be so many things. It can be um, our work, our studies, our, our sports, either as an active uh, athlete or watching uh, sports. Um, we can be consumed by money or power or pleasure, um, the kingdoms of this world. But Jesus is calling us to be his disciples, to take up our cross daily and follow him. And it's Jesus himself who feeds us, who gives us the gift of himself, so that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, as St. Paul said in his writings. So it's Jesus who chooses to dwell in us body, blood, soul, and divinity so that we can follow him daily and bring Jesus to the world and the world to Jesus in his church. And so uh, that's why, as I talked about last week and maybe even the week before, that's why we're, we're going out on mission. The, the um, Eucharistic revival has had three stages. It had a diocesan stage, it had a parish stage last year, and now it's a, it's a national stage or a mission stage, if you will. 
And so I've talked about our ministry at Alamosa High School on uh, Thursday mornings at the lunch period. Mr. Tedford's classroom, I think he's here, there he is, in the Eggborn. Uh, we're going to, all Catholic students, any students who want to come, come. Um, we'll feed, feed you, you know, we'll bring in some food, we'll feed you. And then myself and other Catholics will give a sh short testimony about our faith and what that means to us. Uh, for three semesters, we've been present on Adam State campus, and we're going to continue that. It's going to be Wednesday from 6 to 7.30, every Wednesday. And most Wednesdays we'll have mass followed by food, homemade food. So I know maybe dorm food gets a little old. <laughs> so you have homemade food. And then um, on some weeks we'll have crafts and, and food. But either way, Catholics on campus, food and faith, there's going to be food every Wednesday. So sometimes it'll be mass and then food. Other times it'll be crafts and food. But we look forward to having you, all the Adams State students that are Catholic, and any student who wants to come. And sometimes faculty can't get to a daily mass. Well, they can come at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays in the bear cave in the Nielsen Library, okay? It's just the first door off the right as you go in. So these are examples of making that decision to follow Jesus and to bring Jesus into the world. And, and, and when we do so, we find this great uh, peace that we hear about in the second reading. The second reading um, sometimes is, is misunderstood um, because it's not talking about husbands being tyrants or dictators. It's about husbands being servants to love their wives the way that Christ loved the church. How did Christ look, love the church? Underneath the Balcondino on the main altar, on the high altar, you see this golden crucifix. That's how Christ loved the church. He laid down his life for the church. Husbands are to lay down their, their lives for their wives. And in that way, the, the marriage, the sacrament of holy matrimony, echoes the cr love that Christ has for the church. When we celebrate marriage, we say it's the one gift not washed away by the flood, okay? Noah continued this institution of marriage, and Christ elevated marriage to a sacrament. It was his first sign in St. John's Gospel, the wedding feast at Cana. So, um, if you'd like to help in our mission to Alamosa High School on Thursday uh, at noon, or Adam State University Wednesdays at 6, um, just email our parasecretary and admin at sacredheartalamosa.org and let us know if you'd like to help on Wednesdays at Adam State or on Thursdays uh, at Alamosa High School and how you'd like to help, okay? Uh, the main appeal is for homemade foods and desserts on Wednesday after Mass, after crafts, and on Thursday it's for funds to buy fast food that our teens love, <laughs> but they don't have to get in their cars and go off campus. We'll bring that to them, and we'll give them a little teaching about Jesus. So if you'd like to help in either way, please do so. Uh, just email them, and we'll get in contact with you soon. It doesn't begin this Thursday because we're on retreat, but the Thursday after next, after Labor Day, we'll start Wednesday and Thursday, okay? So we look forward to reaching out to uh, our Adams State University community as well as our Alamosa High School community. And uh, your help is much appreciated. Your prayers are needed and we thank you for all of that. And in a way, it's, it's, it's reaffirming, you know, what I experienced as a boy. I was about eight years old when the image of the Sacred Heart was placed in a prominent uh, place near our dining room table. It's that at table, at the earthly table, we echo what happens at this sacred altar, this Eucharistic table. We echo that. We, we share stories of faith and we grow in faith. We see how God is present and active in our lives, in our daily lives, and then we grow from that. And we support and encourage one another in that as a family, as an Adam State family, as an Alamosa High School family. So again, uh, I ask for your prayers for us. Father Damian and I, Deacon Jerry, we're all on retreat all the priests and, the di and deacons of the diocese 
with our bishop leading us, obviously, uh, and some wonderful retreat master uh, leading us. So keep us in prayer. There will no, not be uh, mass, but we might have we'll definitely try to have Eucharistic exposition adoration as normal and maybe even a word service with Holy Communion a couple days this week. So we'll send out flock notes and Facebook notifications to let you know about that. Okay? But we echo Joshua. We echo Peter. As for us and our house, Sacred Heart of Jesus, St. Francis Jerome and Center, we will serve the Lord. To whom shall we go? Jesus has the words of eternal life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate and suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Jesus has taught us on the Bread of Life Discourse the past four Sundays and today. And we affirm this covenant relationship with Jesus by our presence here at Mass and accept the mission to bring Jesus to the world and the world to Jesus Christ in His Church. And so we lift up our prayers to God our Heavenly Father through our Blessed Lord and the Holy Spirit. For the beaker of Christ on earth, that the people of God may hear and follow his words, let us pray to the Lord. For those who legislate for us, that they may respect and promote the rights of, of the family, let us pray to the Lord. For separated spouses, that through Jesus they may rediscover forgiveness and reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For husbands and wives, that they may give away to one another in obedience to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our sake, for the dead, that Christ may give them life, especially Joey Montoya, let us pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for the soul of Jim Geyser on the ninth day of the Novena, praying for his soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Through the sacred heart of Jesus, may God graciously hear us. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we come before you in gratitude for your gift of yourself to us from the beginning of Abraham to this very moment. Help us to renew the covenant of faith with our Lord Jesus Christ in this Mass and Mass throughout the week and every day in which we pray. May we see that you are present and active in our lives and calling us to be your presence to others in their lives. Through your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please join with us in singing our song for the presentation of the gifts. Number 353, A Place at Your Table. Number 353. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in exaltation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Joe E. Montoya and Jim Geyser, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, patroness of our diocese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Joshua, Joshua renewed the covenant with Adonai in our first reading and the fullness of revelation of that Adonai is the person of Jesus to whom Peter said in today's gospel Master to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life that same Jesus is present on this sacred altar this Eucharistic table the same Jesus is asking us to renew our covenant with him not only in mass but each and every day with every thought word and deed at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, Father. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join with us in singing our first song for communion, number 322, Look Beyond, 322.
number 510, we remember. 510. Number 385, All That We Have Seen, 385.
Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're interested in helping it out of state, um, Teresa's here. Teresa, raise your hand. There we go. Teresa Atencio. So Teresa can uh, get you oriented on helping on Wednesdays. And just uh, email admin at uh, sacredheartalamosa.org to help in either ministry, either campus. We look forward to your participation, your support, your prayers. Again, no mass this week. We'll let you know about a word service with Holy Communion. Adoration. We'll let you know about that. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our sending for him is 394. 394 with one voice. Oh, <laughs> 